your faithfulness, O oh God. You wrestle with the sinner's heart. You lead us by still waters into mercy. And nothing can keep us apart. So remember your people. Remember your children, remember your promise, O oh God. Your grace is enough, your grace is enough, your grace is enough for me. Great is your love and justice, God. the weak to lead the strong. You lead us in the song of your salvation. And all your people sing along. So remember your people. Remember your children. Remember your promise, O oh God. Your grace is enough, your grace is enough, your grace is enough for me. Your grace is enough, your grace is enough, your grace is enough for me. Your grace is enough. Heaven reaching down to us, your grace is enough for me. God, I see your grace is enough. I'm covered in your love. Your grace is enough for me. For Good morning and welcome to Abingdon United Methodist Church on this Sunday, December 6th. I'm Reverend Scott Carnes, the pastor, and this week we continue our Advent journey with our series, Out of the Dark, Into the Light, a, a series where we are looking at uh, how the world is sometimes a little darker than what we wish it to be, but how Christ brings light into that world, shining light in the darkness. And, and we follow the candles of the Advent wreath, uh, uh, how Christ shines hope and love and joy and peace into this world. This week we light the second Advent candle and, and we look at the light of love, how Christ brought love into this world in a, a very literal way, changing the very shape of, of this planet changing the very notion of religion. Let us turn to that God of love as we worship today. Welcome to worship. Today we celebrate the second Sunday of Advent as we wait for Christ and celebrate the coming of love into this world. Let us pray. Gracious God, we wish to seek out your love and worship today through the scripture, prayer, and music. We wish to feel your presence right here and right now. May your love be felt, be seen, be expected, and be shared as we worship today and throughout this week. Amen. Hear these words from Psalm 146. The person whose help is the God of Jacob. The person whose hope rests on the Lord their God is truly happy. God, the maker of heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them. God, who is faithful forever, who gives justice to people who are oppressed, who gives bread to people who are starving. The Lord, who frees prisoners, who makes the blind see. 
who straightens up those who are bent low, who loves the righteous, who protects immigrants, who helps orphans and widows, but who makes the way of the wicked twist and turn. The Lord will rule forever. Zion, your God, will rule from one generation to the next. Praise the Lord. In this psalm, we hear about a world of starvation and oppression. The Jewish people were used to trouble. They were used to living in darkness, but they were also an incredibly hopeful people. They envisioned a God that loved them so much that God would make the blind to see and protect the immigrants, widows, and orphans. Despite living in a tough world, the Jewish people knew their God would not leave them in darkness, but would bring them into the light because God loved them. Today's candle reminds us of God's love for God's people, and we here today are God's people. This week, as with each week, we light candles in worship for those whom we know about, who, who have requested prayers or who have loved ones who need prayers. The, these lights remind us, they remind us 
that we are, we are not alone. We are not alone in needing prayer, and we are not alone in feeling hurt or lonely or unloved. There are others who understand whatever pain it is we are going through. They, they understand in some way. And so we join together with one voice, lifting up our concerns and our joys, that God would be with us in our pain and in our excitement. Let us pray. Dearest God, we thank you for this time of worship, for all who are in it. We, we pray that uh, in this time of worship, we would feel your presence wherever we are. We would know that we are not alone. We are not alone because we have you in our lives, but also because we have a community of faith that surrounds us. Help us to, to see your love, to experience your love, and to share your love with others and to join together in prayer with other people of faith that we would find our way with you. Lord, we ask these things in your holy and your blessed name. Amen.
Today's scripture comes to us from 1 John chapter 2, verses 7 through 10. Dear friends, I'm not writing a new commandment to you, but an old commandment that you had from the beginning. The old commandment is the message you heard. On the other hand, I am writing a new commandment to you, which is true in him and in you. Because the darkness is passing away and the true light already shines. The one who claims to be in the light while hating a brother or sister is in the darkness even now. The person loving a brother or sister stays in the light and there is nothing in the light that causes a person to stumble. This is the word of God for the people of God. Amen. These letters, uh, otherwise known as epistles, are, are meant to give instruction. They, they do a lot of things, but throughout the letters we often find instruction. They, they give instruction in two specific things. Number one, how to have faith. That, that is, how to experience or to see the light. And how to live in Christian community. In other words, <laughs> how to get along, or, or as today's writer would say, how to live in the light. Having faith is, is recognizing that, that God loves. God loves. God loves us. God loves others. God loves all of creation. And, and it's about taking that love, accepting that love, and, and returning love to our God. Living in Christian community, well, that's about loving one another. <laughs> and that's all the harder to do. It's hard to love one another. Even our brothers and sisters in Christ sometimes get under our skin. Well, I shouldn't speak for you. I know that my brothers and sisters in Christ have sometimes gotten under my skin. And I'm not talking about any one of you. I'm just talking about uh, throughout my life. I, I know uh, church people who, who, who are in the same church that can't get along with each other, who, who, uh, who shoot cold stares over fixing the you know, funeral luncheon or something. Again, I'm not talking about this particular church. I'm, I'm just saying I, I know people like this. I've seen prejudiced behavior against Christians of color or LGBTQ Christians. I've seen politicians who, who, who question the other politician about whether they're a, a real Christian or not. Today's scripture comes with something of an indictment for those of us who sometimes fall short on loving one another. It says the one who claims to be in the light while hating their brother or sister is in the darkness even now. It is hard to truly love uh, other people, even other people of faith. And it is hard to truly live in the light of Christ. Our God, though, never leaves us in that darkness. You know, the first century world had fallen into a terrible uh, spiritual darkness, and, and that's the moment where God came into the world to bring light. From Jacob to King David to, to Paul, God has urged people to, to, to leave their mistakes behind in the dark and to come into the light. We are invited to leave our hate, our prejudice, our discord, our divisions all in the darkness and come into the light because our God loves us in, in, in unimaginable, uh, boundless ways. And the thing is, when we come to recognize God's love for us, when we recognize it fully, when we want to uh, see that light completely, we can, we can share love with the people around us and they too can can see that love of God. In other words, when we begin to live in the light, 
it helps draw others into the light. When, when we find ourselves disagreeing with, uh, well, whether it's church family or, or your actual family, when we find ourselves in disagreement about politics or religion, we can belittle the other person. We can even cut them out of our lives. Or we can find ways to love them despite our differences, which may be very real. When we don't understand another person's culture or way of life, we can make light of it, we can devalue it, we can even ignore it. Or we can find ways to love them despite our differences. When we're angry, whether it is with a child, a parent, a coworker, a, a fellow churchgoer, someone in our community, we can allow that anger to define the relationship. Or we can find ways to love them despite our very real differences. Living in the light is not an easy thing. We, we can turn to our God to, uh, to, to see God's love and to even accept that love, to, to return that love to God. But God calls us to take that one step further, not just to see the light for ourselves, not just to experience the light for ourselves, but to live in the light, sharing the light of Christ's love with others. That means, that means a, a pretty hard task. We have to love ourselves. We have to love our God. And we have to find ways to love other people fully, embodying the love of God to the, to the people that we, we, we know around us. Let us, let us look to the light of Christ for, for Christ's love for us. Let us accept that. Return it. But then find ways to share it so that we, like the early Christians, are living in the light this Advent season. As we come to this table, all are invited to this table. You don't already have to have it all together. In fact, all of us who come to this table today, we don't have it all together. But what sets us apart from so many in this world is that we are trying to get it together. We are trying to strive after God's love. We are trying to find new ways to share that love with other people. And that's exactly what God was doing we give thanks to our God that the Lord Jesus on the night before he died took bread and after giving thanks broke the bread gave it to his disciples and said take eat this is my body given for you do this in remembrance of me and in the same way Jesus took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sin whenever you drink it. Do this in remembrance of me. As I pray over these elements, I invite you to extend your hands and pray over the elements in your own home. Gracious God, now pour out your Holy Spirit among us in this bread in this cup and upon us your people be for us one body and blood that we will be one with christ and one in mission and ministry to this world through christ with christ in christ in the unity of the holy spirit all glory and honor are yours almighty god now and forever amen I invite you now to Take some of the grain before you. And know that God loves you. And then drink of the fruit of the vine. know that this is the cup of salvation.
poured out for you and for all people. Let us pray. Dearest God, we thank you for this feast before us, the ways in which it nourishes us, mind, body, and spirit. Help us to take this nourishment and love others as you love us and as we love you. In your name we pray. Amen. worship today and we go out from here from this time of worship with love upon our hearts with the light of Christ within us and shining around us so that no matter what darkness we experience whatever troubles might plague us we go out into this world knowing that we have the light of Christ to vanquish that darkness to show us the way, but also that we can shine the light for others, that others can uh, go from living in darkness to seeing the great light. Let us go forth from worship, a light unto this world. 
Amen. Like a 